Hello viewers, welcome to the section TDD in action. In this section we will learn about developing an RPN calculator application and testing a piece of legacy code. Now we move on to the video developing an RPN calculator application. In this video we will see how to develop and reverse Polish notation calculator application that follows the TDD approach. Step by step I would like to demonstrate how one can follow the TDD approach while developing an application. As the first step, I would like to explain the project directory structure, then we'll move forward. Type the tree command to see the project directory structure. As you can see, I have created a folder named ex1 with this highlighted structure. The Google test folder is the gtest library that has the necessary gtest and gmock header files. Now library gtest.a is the Google test static library that we created in the previous exercise. We are going to use the make utility to build our project, hence I have placed a make file in the project home directory. The src directory will hold the production code, while the test directory will hold all the test cases that we are going to write. Now we will see a simple test case for addition. Let's write this addition test case in our Atom editor. Before writing the test case, we need to add some header files required for the test case. Open the RPN calculator test.h file from the test folder. Let's add some block of code in it. As you can see, we have included some header files required for test case. Next, open the RPN calculator test.cpp file. Let's add some lines of code in it. As you can see, we have translated the test case as a Google test in the test folder. In order to compile this test case, let's write the minimal production code that is required in the SRC folder. Let's open the SRC folder. First, open the RPN calculator.h file. Add some lines of code in it. Here we have written the class RPN calculator in which we have declared the evaluate method. We will implement this method in the RPN calculator.cpp file. Open the RPN calculator.cpp file. Let's add some block of code in it. In this highlighted block of code, we have implemented the evaluate method. As the RPN maths expression will be supplied as a space separated string, the evaluate method will take a string input argument. Next, open the make file from the test folder. The make file class helps run the test cases every time we compile the production code. Now let's build and run the test case and check the test case's outcome. Go to our terminal. First, clear this screen using the reset command. To build a test case, execute the make command. As you can see, we have successfully built our test case. In this highlighted line, you can see that we have obtained the output file named calc.exe. Run the test case using dot slash calc.exe. In TDD, we always start with a failing test case. The root cause of the failure is that the expected result is 25, while the actual result is zero. The reason is that we haven't implemented the evaluate method, hence we have hard-coded to return zero irrespective of any input. So, let's implement the evaluate method in order to make the test case pass. We have modified src-rpncalculator.h and src-rpncalculator.cpp. Let's take a look at these two files from our Atom editor. In the rpncalculator.h header file, Observe the new header files that are included to handle string tokenizing and string double conversion, and copy the RPN tokens to the vector. Open the modified RPN calculator.cpp file. As per the standard postfix algorithm, we are using a stack to hold all the numbers that we find in the RPN expression. Anytime we encounter the arithmetic maths operator, we pop out two values from the stack and add them and push back the results into the stack. If the toke isn't an arithmetic operator, we can safely assume that it would be a number, so we just push the value to the stack. With this implementation in place, let's try the test case and check whether the test case passes. Go to our terminal and clear this screen with the reset command. To build our test case, execute the make command. As you can see, we have successfully built our test case. Let's execute our test case using the dot slash calc dot exe command. Cool. Our first test case has passed as expected. It's time to think of another test case. This time, let's add a test case for subtraction. Let's translate this test case as a Google test in the test folder. 
Go to our Atom Editor and open the RPN Calculator test.cpp file from the test folder. Now add the subtraction test case in the RPN Calculator test.cpp file. With this test case added to the RPN Calculator test, let's see how it works. Go back to our terminal and clear this screen using the reset command. Type the make clean all command to build our test case. As you can see, we have successfully built our test case. Let's execute the test cases and check whether our new test case passes. Run the test case using dot slash calc dot exe. As expected, the new test fails as we haven't added support for subtraction in our application yet. This is very evident based on the C++ exception as the code attempts to convert the subtraction operator into a number. Let's add support for subtraction logic in our evaluate method. Go back to our Atom editor. Open the RPN calculator.cpp file. After line number 27, add some block of code. We have added support for subtraction logic in the RPN calculator.cpp file. It's time to test. Let's execute the test case and check whether things are working. Go to our terminal and clear this screen using the reset command. To build our test case, run the make clean all command. As you can see, we have successfully built our test case. Now execute the test case using dot slash calc dot exe. Cool. Did you notice that our test case failed in this instance? Wait a minute. Why are we excited if the test case failed? The reason we should be happy is that our test case found a bug. After all, that is the main intent of TDD, isn't it? The root cause of the failure is that the expected result is 15, while the actual result is minus 15. Let's go to the Atom Editor and see what the root cause of the failure is. The root cause of the failure is that the stack operates on the basis of last in, first out, whereas our code assumes FIFO. Did you notice that our code assumes that it will pop out the first number first, while the reality is that it is supposed to pop out the second number first? Interesting. This bug was there in the addition operation too. However, since addition is associative, the bug was kind of suppressed, but the subtraction test case detected it. Let's fix the bug and check whether the test cases will pass. In line number 20, remove the first number and replace it with the second number. Likewise, in line number 22, replace the second number with the first number. We need to replace first with second and second with first in the else if function. Let's execute the test case and check it is working. Go to our terminal and clear this screen using the reset command. Let's type make clean all to build our test case. As you can see, we have successfully built our test case. Now run this test case using dot slash calc dot exe. As you can see, both the tests are passed. Awesome, we fixed the bug and our test case seems to certify that they are fixed. Let's add more test cases. This time, let's add a test case to verify multiplication. Open the Atom Editor and click on the RPN Calculator test.cpp file. Add the multiplication test case into it. We have translated this test case as a Google test in the test folder. Now, add support for multiplication logic. Go to the RPN Calculator.cpp file. After line number 37, add a block of code. We know this time the test cases will pass, so let's fast forward and take a look at the division test case. Open the RPN Calculator test.cpp file. Add the test case of division. We have translated the test case as a Google test in the test folder. Let's add support for division logic. Next, Open the RPN calculator.cpp file. After line number 47, add a block of code for the division test case. Let's skip the test result and move forward with a final complex expression test case that involves many operations. Further, move on to the RPN calculator test.cpp file. After line number 46, add test case for complex RPN expression. We have translated the test case as a Google test in the test folder. Let's check whether our RPN calculator application is able to evaluate a complex RPN expression that involves addition, subtraction, multiplication and division in a single expression with this highlighted test case. In this test case, we are checking whether the expected result 
matches the actual result to the approximation of up to four decimal places. If the values are different beyond this approximation, then the test case is supposed to fail. Let's check the test case output now. Go to our terminal and clear this screen using the reset command. Type make clean all to build our test case. As you can see, we have successfully built our test case. Let's run our test case using dot slash calc dot exe. Great! All the test cases are green, which means all the test cases have passed. Now let's take a look at our production code and check whether there is any room for improvement. Go to our Atom editor and open the RPN calculator.cpp file. The code is functionally good, but as many code smells. It is a long method with the nested if else condition and duplicate code. TDD is not just about test automation, it is also about writing good code without code smells. Hence, we must refactor code and make it more modular and reduce the code complexity. The best part is we don't have to worry about the risk of breaking our code in the process of refactoring, as we have a sufficient number of test cases to give us feedback in case we break our code. First, let's understand how we could refactor the RPN calculator design. Open the Atom Editor. Based on the design refactoring approach, we have refactored the RPN calculator, which is highlighted here. If you compare the RPN calculator code before and after refactoring, you'll find that code complexity has reduced to a decent amount after refactoring. Let's take a look at Maths Factory class. Open the mathfactory.cpp file. Here we have implemented the Math Factory class. As much as possible, we must strive to avoid if else conditions, or in general, we must try to avoid code branching when possible. Hence, STL map is used to avoid if else conditions. This also promotes the reuse of the same math objects, irrespective of the complexity of the RPN expression. Next, move on to the mathoperator.h file. Here we have a class math operator. Let's take a look at the add.h file. Here you can see how the math operator add class is implemented. Let's see the add.cpp file. This is what our add class definition looks like. The subtraction, multiplication, and division classes can be implemented in a similar fashion as an add class. The bottom line is that after refactoring, we can refactor a single RPN calculator class into smaller and maintainable classes that can be tested individually. Let's take a look at the refactored make file class. Now, test our code after the refactoring process is complete. Go to our terminal and type the make clean all command to build our test cases. As you can see, we have successfully built our test cases. Let's execute our test cases using the dot slash calc dot exe command. If all goes well, we should see all the test cases pass after refactoring if no functionalities are broken. Cool! All the test cases have passed. Hence, it is guaranteed that we haven't broken the functionality in the process of refactoring. The main intent of TDD is to write testable code that is both functionally and structurally clean. In this video, we have developed an RPN calculator application. 